In the last video of this series, I left you with this project created and with our running application. I roughly explained what these folders do, that we create our app in the app subfolder of the source folder, and that many of these files here are files we won't work in. Now it's time to dig a bit deeper and learn what actually happens when we visit the index.html file. Again, the important thing to know is, even though we don't see it here, there are some script imports in the running application. They just get added automatically by Webpack. We can see this if we simply inspect our source code here. Do you see that? We got some scripts in there. We reference three script imports, inline, styles and main. Well, the inline and styles script tag here basically bundles some polyfill, webpack, styling related code. Code we barely work on. The interesting part for us is the main bundle, which holds our application code and the Angular 2 code. How does this bundle get created or what does it actually do? How is our application starting? Well, as you just explained, we do have these scripts in the index.html file. And then we recognize this strange element in the index.html, app root. Now this clearly is not a default HTML element. It's not a built-in one. We don't have that by default. Instead, this seems to have something to do with our Angular 2 application. And it does, because you build up your Angular 2 applications with components. This is a topic or this is an idea you might know from React.js, where you also build components. You do the same in Angular 2, though Angular 2 is a bit of a more all-in-one framework than React.js is, just as a side note. But here we reference such a component, app root. And in our app folder, well, it looks like this might be the component we're looking for, this app component. We structure our components in separate files. And it is a naming convention to give the file which holds the component a name of name of the component dot component dot ts, ts for TypeScript. So if we have a look at this, here we see that we have a TypeScript class, which again is in the end all compiled to JavaScript. And to this class, we get this add component thing here. Now this thing here is a decorator, which behind the scenes attaches some metadata to this class. And this actually transforms this class into something else. So by default, it's just a normal class. But with this decorator to Angular 2, it's more than that. It becomes a component with a couple of extra features. The extra features I'm talking about are configured in the object we pass to this component decorator. We specify a selector. And this selector, app root, is exactly what we see here in the index.html. So here we specify how we can use this component, how we can add it to our HTML code. The interesting part here is this selector here works like a CSS selector, which means as it is written like this, it selects any element which looks like this. But we're not limited to this. I could also add a hashtag and now we would select any element, let's say a div, which has an ID of app root. So just like a CSS selector works, you could also use a dot to select by class name. I'm going to revert this since the convention is to use this element style here for components, but I just want you to realize that you could use any other style here too. So this is the selector. The next thing, template URL, is pretty self-explanatory. It points to the HTML code we want to render when this component is loaded, so the template of this component. In the end, the component is something to display on the page, and we can only display something if we got some HTML code. This code is held in this app component HTML file, to which this template URL property points. And here again, we see what we're seeing on this page, a h1 tag with some kind of dynamic data in between. I'll come back to this. The style URLs is the same, but for styles. And here notice we also have an array because we may reference multiple style sheets. The important thing to realize here is by default, these styles will only be applied to this component, not application wide. So if we style h1 tags in this CSS file, only the h1 tags in this template will get styled, not in any other templates. 
Well, I'm going to remove these style URLs here since I don't want to apply any specific styles. And I'm also going to remove the app component.spec.ts file since this file is used for unit tests and I won't cover that here. Okay, so we got the basics. This is our component. This is what we see. The question seems to be answered. We have app root here. We load our Angular 2 application. We have app root here. We load this component. It's not that simple. By default, Angular 2 doesn't scan all your components for their selectors and then whenever it finds a selector, use it. And it's good that it doesn't do this because this would really be a performance hit in a bigger applications. Instead, we have to be explicit and tell Angular 2, hey, which component should you have a look at when this application starts? Because what does starts mean? It means that, of course, as I shot before, we have this main bundle.js file which gets injected here. But the thing which actually gets executed first, and that's just something to keep in mind, is the code in this main.ts file. This is the bootstrap code of an Angular 2 application. This is the code which gets run first, which actually starts our Angular 2 application, which gets it to run. And here we get a couple of imports, including some polyfills, which are managed in this polyfills file. But the important part is the last line here. Here we bootstrap a module, which means we start our Angular 2 application and we pass a module to it. Now we hadn't looked at this module yet, but we will have in a second. For now it's important to understand this starts the application and we start it with an argument, the module we pass here. With that, let's have a look at this module. It's the last file in our app folder, app module TS. Angular 2 uses modules to structure more complex applications. In simpler applications like this one, you may very well only use one module, this app module, but in more complex ones, you might have multiple modules. Now this module basically tells Angular 2, which parts does my application have? And with parts, I mean which components, which directives, which is another feature of Angular 2, which pipes, yet another feature, which services, which other modules might I use that could be built-in modules, or if I were to structure my app with multiple modules, my own modules. So this is how you structure your application. And this is why we load this file when we start the application because we have to tell Angular 2, hey, which parts does my application actually have? Now here you will realize in the module file here, we also get a class which has no content in itself, but which also has a decorator. Here, the ng-module decorator. The ng-module decorator also takes a JavaScript object as an argument. And here we configure this root module again, the kind of description of our application. We have our declarations area here, which basically holds all directives, components and pipes our application uses. This is why we can see the app component here. It's the only component our application has thus far, but as soon as we add other components, we will also register them here in the declarations array. The imports array imports our modules. Now I just said, we're only going to use one module, but there are a couple of built-in ones. For example, the browser module is definitely needed. It gives us some core functionalities Angular 2 offers us for browser applications. The forms and HTTP module may be removed though. As you might imagine, the forms module is needed when working with forms and the HTTP module is needed when working with HTTP. Both will not be things I'll cover here. The providers array is empty. Here we would, and later on we will, add services we want to have in our application. What are services? I'll come back to that. Bootstrap is the last array here, and this is an important one. It specifies, most of the time only one, component, which actually gets loaded first. Remember, I told you Angular 2 does not scan all components for their selectors automatically. Now it does scan the components we add to declarations, but it would still not find the selector we use here in the index HTML. This is the one part where we have to be explicit and tell Angular 2, hey, please, when you start the application, 
first have a look at app component. It's the root component of our application. And this is an important takeaway. Your Angular 2 application will have a root component, which will then hold all other components you may add as nested as you want, but you have this one single root component, which is added here to the bootstrap array so that Angular 2 knows, okay, this is my root component. I'll have a look at it. I find the selector. It's the same selector as here. I load the component in this place. And this is how an Angular 2 application starts. Okay, you're probably now totally shocked. What an effort for this here, this single output. Yep, the startup and the creation of an Angular 2 application really can be a daunting task and really can be overwhelming. But these are the basics. And I promise you from now on, if you get the basics set, if you understand how the application starts, how you manage your application, if, if that is set, the rest will be very easy to follow along and it allows us to create very powerful applications in a very simple way. And I mean simple because the setup is a bit more complex. The rest is indeed very simple. So let's dive deeper into creating new components and actually editing our application in the next video.